Hiya, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Rosie Henshaw, and if you're new here, then welcome. It's lovely to meet you. And if you're already existing, guys, then thank you so much for coming back. I really do appreciate it. Grab yourself a nice cup of tea and some snacks. Mine is actually a peach tea from Lidl, which I absolutely love. I'm hooked on. Picked up the wrong packet. It was meant to be lemon tea for my nan, because I saw she drinks. Um, and now I am hooked. And it's in my mum, Emma Bridgewater mug. And I'm going to get into today's video. Mm -mm -mm. That's amazing. So the first craft we're going to be doing today, oh, anyway, you've probably seen in the title actually, that this is DIY making really beautiful Christmas decorations. Now, you can do this with any sort of colour scheme that you want at home. I will suggest options as we go through. Um, but this is an alternatives, you know, I'm trying to use things that I have at home that I think most people would have at home too in the exception of a few other pieces. I will link anything I can in the description box below because I've got a few little bits from Amazon for good prices um, and a few other little bits. But you're not going to need a lot of stuff. I think a lot of this stuff you may already have in your supplies, even if you're not a crafter. So the first thing I'm going to show you is these embroidery hoops. Now I did purchase these from Hobbycraft. These were £2 each, tech tags off them. And they're really nice. They're obviously meant to be decorations and yeah. They're two pound each, really nice. The ribbon's quite nice red ribbon, but it's a bit bright. So I'm gonna cut this off because I have got some really nice sort of velvety ribbons that I got from Amazon last year. And I'm gonna be making DIY um, initial uh, hanging ornaments. Now I've seen a lot of really beautiful ones, but they're really quite pricey and you really don't need to spend that amount of money. And it's nice to make something yourself as well because these could be gifts as well. I would, you know, when they're hanging up in years to come, you'd be like, we made them. You can even make them with your children or your friends, whatever you want to do. Um, so all you're going to need is an embroidery hoop. Now, you don't necessarily need an embroidery hoop at all. You could even get a air drying clay, roll it out with a cookie cutter, get a little circle, and you could either decoupage with tissue paper on the top to get this flat design, or you could just get something circular in shape. I know that they do little circular discs um, in Hobbycraft, normally packs of five and they're wooden. All you've got to do is, they normally have holes in them as well. They're like blanks. You get like a pound for a pack. If they're one pound fifty for a pack of five, put your ribbon on. You don't actually have to have embroidery hoops. The reason I'm having embroidery hoops is just because I actually think they look really cute. And obviously because I make a lot of stuff homemade on that tree, it's got that nod of homemade where it's obviously used normally for embroidery, stuff like that. But they are two pound each and I'm thinking these will look really lovely. So I've just got a cushion cover. So I had these cushions all in my living room. I bought too many because they went on offer to like three pound from Dunelm um, and they come with a cushion inside. Feather, may I add. Um, so I needed a feather insert for one of my other new cushions that I got for the living room. This one's got a bit faded and bobbly because um, of the children and stuff. It's a few little stains on the corners. Um, but I kept it and I thought I might as well buy an extra one for three pound. It's cheaper than buying the insert, which was five pound, the feather field. So I ended up with this one left over. So I put the new one new cover on another one, and then this old cover that's a bit stained and stuff, I thought, I can use this for scraps. Um, so this is in my scrap cupboard. You can use a tea towel. If you go in a charity shop and you like the design of a scarf or you know a t-shirt, a dress, anything you can get cheaply, any fabric is not out of bounds that you like the design to. Also as well, when you go in a fabric shop, ah, so they usually have like a basket of bits where they've had a little bit of an offcut left over of material and they'll sell it super cheap. You're not gonna need a lot to do this, but I am using a cushion cover. Um, they have got some really nice cushion covers and, um, not cushion covers, got some really nice tea towels in Primark at the moment, really, really cheap. And you can obviously keep the two tea towels, they come in a pack of three and you just use the one for your design. I'm gonna get some cookbooks actually to stack this on so you can see what I'm doing. There we go, got a bit of Nigella on top. Um, and I'm gonna cut it out. So you're gonna need your embroidery hope. Let's get in Rosie anyway. And I'm just gonna, in the corner, roughly see how much material I'm gonna need. So I'm just gonna cut round, not too closely, because this is gonna to need to be pushed in. So cut the zip section. And cut round it as neat as I can. You can go over this after and trim this once you're done. Now, you can embroider these. This would be really lovely to have hand embroidered little ones. How gorgeous would they look? But do you know what? Christmas, I have my tree out really early <laughs> in November. I love the build up. It's the build up for me, guys. I absolutely love the build up. 
Like I actually feel like Christmas Day is never as good as the actual build up itself. Like it's not flat. I don't see it as like um, an anticlimax. I still really love it because I know some people do feel like that. Um, yeah, I just absolutely <laughs> love the build up. I'm also going to be using, so you can use, I would use probably the back of that cushion if I wanted to. I'm going to use some stiffer material to hold in this because normally this would have, oh, I think there's someone knocking at my door. One sec. Sorry about that. Um, so you're gonna need some sort of stiff material. Now these are really old. I thought, what have I got in my shed? Um, so I just got this old stocking that I got for like 50p in the sales in Hobbycraft after I think they're only a pound anyway. Um, and I'm just gonna cut a bit of this out, but it's like really stiff material. Um, so it'd be good to keep this nice and tall in the embroidery ring and not make it so see-through the fabric. But if you get a thicker fabric, you won't need to do that anyway. It's just because my fabric's quite thin and I want to use this up because it makes sense to use what you already have. And I love the pattern of this cushion cover. Um, so I just thought, go for it. Use some different material on the back of it. So kept that. Right. Now I'm just going to be pushing my embroidery hoop a little bit on the back and then pushing it through. Like so. Then we're gonna really tighten this up so our fabric's all completely stuck. It's not coming out. Now at this point, if you wanted to hand stitch initials on this, that would look amazing. I've also got a Cricut machine, which I could easily get the iron-on uh, material. I might even do a couple in gold actually, but I'll show you one that we can do super cheap and you don't have to have a Cricut machine to do it um, if you don't have a Cricut machine. But if you do, obviously a little iron on, perfect. Just trimming the excess off. And then you're left with this really cute, let me just trim that a bit more. You could apply glue to the back of this if you wanted to. I'm not going to. I quite like it. Just a little bit raw at the back. So now we've got our little embroidery hoop. Now, what I'm going to be doing with this is I'm going to be stenciling these instead. Instead of using my Cricut machine. So I've got this stencil pack. I showed you this like probably last year in an autumn craft video. I got this stencil pack from the works and it's amazing. It's got all these like squirrely letters and stuff on it. And I'm gonna be doing these for the children and me and Gary too. So I'm gonna be using the, so I'm gonna do mine for now. I'm gonna do an R. I'm gonna do an R on my one so I can show you. So just your stencil. You're just gonna need some sort of paint. Now I would recommend using any tester pot you need. These are decorations, it doesn't need to be perfect paint. But I would say if you use a chalk paint, I've just got an old tin in my garage. Um, of chalk paint. It's quite thick and it's less likely to seep into the material. And I'm gonna be using a sponge as well to sponge this on. So just a little bit, my, my tin's all crackling. Just gonna dip my sponge in. Making sure I've got enough on the end of it. And I'm gonna get a bit of paper as well actually, just so I can dab off the excess. There's a bit of card. Dab off the excess. See, I use cloths that I wash in my sink, and um, so I only get like some sponges now and again. But the funny thing, I've got like a little wooden brush that I use to wash my dishes, I'm trying to go more eco -y. So I didn't actually have a sponge to do this with, so I had like these little magic eraser sponges. So I thought that I'd have to do. Um, <laughs> can use a brush if you want to. So then, centre this on the front and all I'm going to do is just go over the whole piece where it's stenciled in the white and then we're going to peel this up and what you'll be left with is a really cute decoration. Now I'm not going to um, you could even get a little brush if you wanted to and just go over the design, smooth it out a little bit, make it a bit more solid. I mean, don't get me wrong, I probably will give this 
two coats just because I think it's going to need that to be out more solid. But as you can see, once you start going over the design with a little brush, it really sort of like helps that design. And you'll end up with something that looks really nice and solid. Obviously do the sponge technique with two, two coats or just use a little brush after to go over and you end up with a really cute little design. Now I got this ribbon from Amazon and it's really, really nice and it's in a lovely sagey, olivey green. And I literally got tons of this. I don't know how many meters it is, it's loads. Um, and I thought it's perfect for wrapping gifts or to hang in on the deck on the tree if you want. Um, so I thought I'm gonna use this ribbon to hang on like my baubles and stuff. But what I'm also gonna add to this is I also got a little packet of gold bells from um, Amazon as well. Now, obviously you don't have to add these. I also thought if you wanted to, I know lots of people have foliage left over from other decorations, or if you were doing this in like say a blue theme, you could have like a blue fabric in this. You could get a little pack of tiny baubles in blue or silver and hang these on the top as well to add that to it. You don't have to go with that sort of design. If you're going for bright colors, you could obviously do a bright colored letter on the front of this and the ribbon can be, I don't know, like a jute string. And you could even hang like little disco loop balls from this, whatever you wanna do. You don't have to spend fortunes, it literally is. Use what decor you've already got at home to take bits from that to add to this. So I did have this packet. I bought a packet of these to go along across my picture wrap, uh, ledge um, because I have a little winter village there. But once it's dry and tied up, we're going to have these beautiful little... Um, I'm going to tie it in such a way that it doesn't dangle right on there. it be like there, you know? Um, and I'll tie that up. I could even like put a little knot in that bit there to keep the, the bell there, which I will do. I'm sorry, but how cute does that look? But I wanted to show you that you can do it really cheaply as well without a Cricut machine. If you do have a Cricut machine, amazing, then obviously you can do that as well. So for the next craft we're gonna be doing, you're going to need a candle of any type. So I'm gonna be using my dinner candles because at Christmas, I love having dinner candles out. I think it just looks really, really nice um, on the table. I don't always like them, but I just think they look smart. And that sounds silly, you're probably like, Rosie, why have them? You can get the LED ones, and you can get the LED ones, and um, obviously have the flicker, but they are real wax on the outside, so you could do that with them as well. But obviously, maybe have a practice first. Um, I've also got some pillar candles. These are in my lanterns that I have in the garden. Um, so these are like cream ones that you can get from the pound shop. You can just get them cheap. I'm just using ones that I've got around the house. So I've got a few of these that I'm gonna be decorating. Now, you may have seen the craft where I show you with the hairdryer or the heat gun, and you just use your tissue paper to decoupage the actual um, candle. You wrap it on, you heat it on, and the wax will penetrate through, and you will have the transfer on your candle. This is completely different because you're going to need some candles. So. I have this pack of candles from Home Bargains from last year, but I just want to let you know, Primark and Home Bargains and the Pound Shop, they do packets of tea lights for about a pound, um, and you get loads of different colours. The reason why there's two missing from here is because I've just lit, been waiting for the wax to melt, um, a red one and a green one, so you're going to need to light up your candles, let the wax melt enough, you're also going to need a little brush, or you know, like a wooden skewer, whatever you're gonna be using to make the decorations on the candle. But we're going to be doing painting candles, which I think is such a cute little idea. Obviously, wait for it to melt enough that there's a puddle enough away from the, that's why I've sort of like cut it here, because I was waiting a little while for it to melt. Um, there's a puddle enough away from the flame so you're not gonna to need to set fire to your brush or whatever you're gonna be using. You could use bamboo skewers, tip of a pencil, anything you want that's sharp to just basically decorate this with. So I'm gonna be using red and green. You could obviously use any colors. I mean, that would be a cute little gingerbread man, wouldn't it? Purple berries, you could do stripes. I'm gonna be doing some holly, I think, on mine because I think that'd be really cute. So I'm just gonna be getting some of the wax on my paintbrush. And I'm just gonna be painting little berries onto my candle because I think that'd be really cute.
and you'll see it literally sets on the candle and then it's part of the candle because I know some people were a little bit dubious about the tissue paper I mean I've never had any problems with that I've used it for years and it's never been an issue I got shown by that lovely lady that I met through YouTube Lizzie um, and she showed me the idea with the tissue paper and she said her friend's been doing it for years so obviously I've not had an issue, been what using that for about three years that, that way, light them candles, no problem. Um, but I know some people were a bit nervous about doing it that way. So this way is a way that you can obviously do it and it ensures that you're not gonna, you know, it's not definitely not gonna set fire because it's wax anyway. So it's gonna burn in the same way with the candle. It's actually part of the candle. Even though the tissue paper is, it becomes part of the candle, shall I say, right. So I'm just starting to get little red dots on this where I'm gonna have my holly, spacing them out. And I was going slow at first, but then once I know sort of how quickly it dries, I can go in a little bit quicker with this. I was a bit worried it may drip, so I wanted to just be a bit careful with it, but it's setting pretty quick. But I mean, even polka dots on this in different colors would be really nice with green. Millie's here, by the way, in the background. It's the, it's the half-term holidays and she was just having a little bit of a relax, weren't you, darling? But now she's now she's here watching me craft. Which is good. Do you like it? Should we do some um, candle painting? Yeah. I did one once and I like heart ones, but then I accidentally left it because it wouldn't. You done it with hearts? Um, I lighted little red and pink hearts on it. Right. So yeah, I've got our little red dots. Now for the holly, I am just going to go and get. We're gonna have a look. Have we got bamboo skewers, Mo? We did, didn't we? I'm pretty sure we did. Oh, oh I know what I'm gonna use, actually. I think we had the, I think we had bamboo skewers. Oh, I know what I can use. I've got them olive sticks. I've got a point on them that'd be good to draw with. They go through olive, so you can put um, not mini cocktails. Like skewers, kind of. Yeah. And then I'm just going to go in with the green. It's just like a little bit of a zigzag, really. Hasn't got to be perfect. These are just candles, you know. And they start to look really cute. I think I'm going to go in with the brush, you know. I think that'd be fine. I'll go in with the brush because I think it needs a bit more of a stretch on it. This green's like a really nice green as well. It's not too dark. And these candles, obviously, I can still use after I finish candle painting, so win-win for me. We've got little hollies on the candle and it just looks so, so pretty. And once it's in my little candlesticks, I'm gonna be having up, I might even tie some like berries and some foliage and stuff around the bottom of the candlesticks and they just look really, really pretty and beautiful. So I would definitely, definitely recommend doing some candle painting. I'm gonna pop you over there. So, so far we've done a uh, little decorations, our little candles, which I think look really cute. And I think on a large candle, this could work really, really well as well. Now, I'm gonna blow these out. Actually, I'm gonna keep them going, get the Christmas scent, put them on the windowsill, why not? Let the Christmas scents blow through the room. Let's move these aside, they dry off. I can probably heat gun them and then wipe them and then be able to reuse them. Obviously, my olive stick, I'll just pick it off and wash it to reuse it in case we're bringing She's going to throw an olive stick, which is metal, which is wasteful. I'm not. So we've got those decorations. Now what I wanted to show you is I'm going to be making a little wreath. So you may remember this little wreath. I made this in the spring. This was a charity shop embroidery hoop that I got really cheaply. But like I said to you, anything that's a circle, you can use the wreath. You can get the little uh, wicker wreath forms for a pound and pound shop. You can use them instead. I just used this, like I said, last year because I already had this. Now, I always love to reuse stuff that I've already got. So I did stick on some of this greenery. Greenery? <laughs> I'm Jonathan Ross now. Um, greenery. And I've done the wires round so we can undo this. I mean, you could also just take the flowers off because I did hot glue a lot of the pink flowers and I glued them onto the actual stems. So you could take this off and I will reuse these. That's glued to the wire. Right, let's get this off as much as we can. I love to reuse items 
because then I'll put them back in my little like floral scraps and then I can reuse them. I'm just going to cut the wire, go in so it's quicker for me. It's the same principle, but literally had all the bits down the shed, like in my summer house, in my stores, my craft supplies. And I thought, why not? So you can use florist wire for this like I did last time. I've got a few little blobs of glue on this, which I can get off. My scissors, get that off. So now it's all clean, ready to be used again. Um, so what I'm gonna be doing is, is using some stems. So I have this down in the shed. I obviously always collect any sort of these stems. This was from two years ago when I made a DIY table centerpiece um, on the table. So I thought, Do you know what? I'm gonna use this now this year. This was from the range. This was 2 dollars a stem. Probably only gonna need a little bit of this. And then I've got some berries that I took out of a reef one year as well so i'm going to be using these and i've also got some bells that's why i got the bells out in the first place now these normally come on these sort of like bits of paper wrapped around them and you can separate them that's what i love to do separate them because then what you can do is use it a bit easier it goes a lot further and it's already on its wire so you can use it to manipulate it and wrap it around I just find it easier and the thing is as well I have like literally a big massive box of different stems for different things and when it comes to Christmas if my garlands or wreaths look a little bit lackluster like there's not enough in it what I'll do is I'll just get bits and bobs and shove it in and you know make it look a bit more a bit more pretty so I've got these like faux pine ones I'm going to spread these out because I think they look rather pretty and I'm thinking that one's even got a little pine cone in it I'm thinking of using these as the main base for this this one's already going in a rounded shape so I'm just gonna, I might do this at the bottom of this reef this year actually, rather than at the side. So I'm just gonna get the, the wire and wrap this round to secure this into place. Obviously you can use florist wire as well if you want to, um, but I think these will be okay as they are. And I'm just gonna manipulate this a little bit, bend this slightly rounded so that it can go on that side. And I'm gonna wrap this one round the bottom as well. Gonna start to get like a really nice little design going. I actually quite like the ribbon that's already on there as well that I used from last year. This side's a little bit sparse, so I'm gonna need another one of these pines to pop in. Because this one's just got a bit more pine on it than the other one. But you've separated them all now, so it's good because you can obviously just add a bit more if you need to on certain branches more than others. I'd say, without it being absolutely perfect, I'd say that's pretty similar. It's pretty similar either side. Now what I'm gonna use is a little bit of different foliage. So I have got some eucalyptus as well that was in the previous reef. Um, so I'm thinking a little bit of eucalyptus will add a little bit more greenery to this and it'll look a little bit more, more different. Now I didn't get my, these are also wired, so I could wire these round, but I didn't bring in my florist wire for some reason. I don't think my brain's particularly working since I've had Albert. Um, so <laughs> I didn't bring it in, but it's fine. because I'm gonna be using some ribbon to attach some bells in a moment anyway. So I can use that to sort of add to my little eucalyptus and stuff. And I'll pop that through there. And that should stay as so on the front like that. Now I have got ribbon, so I have got some green ribbon. I've got, like I said, a massive bunch of this green ribbon from um, Amazon. And I also got lots of red ribbon. Now I'm thinking of using the red because I do have very traditional and I'm probably gonna hang this from the peg rail in my um, living room that I have because I think it'll look really pretty. So I'm gonna get some ribbon. I'm thinking to have like a really nice oversized droopy ribbon at the bottom of this. So I'm just gonna tie it at the front and I want like the dangles to be quite long on this. I'm gonna tie my bow. I'm going for that, you know, like you just made it real quick, which is, is actually what we're doing. Um, but I just want that really nice, simple, Scandinavian, nice, pretty little look. So something, like that at the bottom i'm just going to trim them so they're like a bit more equal in length and i'm just going to cut them at an angle as well 
that always makes it look a bit more expensive and a bit more well made. There we go, really pretty. Now I'm going to add some berries. So I think the berries are just going to make it look so different. These are already on a wire. You can actually order off Amazon like these that already come on a wire. Um, but I'm just got these from a wreath that I already had. So I've just separated them and I'm going to put them to the back and twist them and that will keep them in and it will also keep the other bits of the wreath in place too. These ones. You can see where I've been manipulating these to go with these before because these were in, uh, what, what did I put these in? I think I put these in a, um, my garland actually that goes on my fireplace last year. I'm gonna pop them in. I put these from the back and twist them around. We're really starting to get that really lovely Christmassy berry vibe. So these have got different bits of greenery, so I'm probably gonna trim that down. And do some more. Separate them like that, split them like that, so then you can just tie them in as you go along. And then yet again, when you get to the back, just cross them over and twist them together. And that'll hold them into place. And I'm gonna do the same on this little section here. Now, obviously, foliage you can get super, super cheap. The pound shop also do a little section where it's like a wrapping toppers and you can get a packet of these um, for a pound, like the berries, wrapping toppers. But you could also go get some pine cones for free. If you've got baubles on your tree, add the baubles into this instead. Um, you want foliage, you don't want to go out and spend on foliage, get some from the garden. You can get them in like areas where you've got like, you know, if you don't have a garden, wooded areas, parks, little trims of it isn't going to hurt nobody. Normally it's found on the ground and it's fine. You can add twigs to this um, and, you know, Ribbon, ribbon you can get really cheap from the pound shop as well. I just know I use a lot of it, so that works out better for me to buy the bigger rolls of it. Um, so this is this so far. Now, I really wanted to elevate the look of this, so I'm gonna be adding some of the bells that I got from Amazon onto this as well and hanging these from the bottom. I just think they'll look really pretty. Hung down. So, <laughs> I'm sorry. This is just the best sound in the world. Tie it to the back. And the forest wire that was off of the last reef. Trim it. How cute is that from bits of stuff that we already had with the candles? It's so exciting. It just makes me happy. And that little ornaments and literally i had all of these items indoors you don't have to go out and spend a fortune on anything because you know i'm sure you have a nice bit of fabric somewhere whether it's a tea towel or a cushion or you know a scrap of anything do you know what would be a really good idea you know like an old christmas sack cute like cute jute <laughs> Hessian, I was going to say Hessian and Jute at the same time. Cute. It is cute. You could put like Hessian from an old sack in one of these and then do your letter on the top of it. It'd be really lovely. I'd probably recommend doing that flat before you put it in. You don't have to have the bells. You could add ball balls. You could have foliage. You could add, add um, pine cones that you can collect for free. And honestly, anything you want to do, you can. You could have an old reef base. Another thing as well, you don't necessarily have to have, like I say, these embroidery hoops. I think they look quite vintage and quite cute. They do do these larger ones for, I think it's £2 in home bargains. I know they do them in a pound shop as well, places like B&M. But honestly, even if you were to buy that and add, you know, like foliage and stuff that you've got, you're still only spending a couple of pounds. You can make something that you easily, 
in a nice shop, I'm sorry, that easily could have spent like 15 quid on that, if not more. And even places like B&M, it's probably gonna cost me like a tenner. So, and I've made it, it's nicer, no one's gonna have it. The little homemade decorations, they are just so cute. So I wanted to share this video with you guys because I know so many times I do little crafts at home and then I'll share it or it'll be in the background of a video when I show a tour and you're like, you didn't show us how to make that, that'd be really nice. Um, and you should just do some more chilled crafts. So even though you're probably not gonna learn a lot from these crafts, I just thought I'd share them with you anyways. Hope you enjoyed this video, guys. I've been Rosie Henshaw, see you later. Take care, bye.